let's get started. We got a pretty nice crowd here. So, uh, well, welcome everybody. Good morning or good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, wherever you're joining us from. My name is Lanzo Luconi. I am the founder and director of the Costa Rica Piano Festival. And I'd like to welcome you to our very first episode of the series Pedagogy Talks with none other than the wonderful Irina Gorin. In this, in this series, we're gonna be exploring different different uh, topics that we're going to be discussing. We're going to be interacting with you guys and feel free to ask questions. However, we're going to have our conversation first and towards the end, uh, you may come in and join the conversation. You may also ask questions on our chat and we also have some questions that came in through our Instagram page. Uh, just a couple of reminders to please um, be respectful. Keep your mics and your videos turned off. Um, until you are or until we're in the section for questions and well um, I'd like to now give the floor and present to you uh, Irina Gorin was wonderful pianist a wonderful pedagogue and just a wonderful person she's had uh, so many um, incredible students her experience um, has uh, allowed pianists from very young age to very uh, advanced to um, pursue a musical career with great success. Uh, she's also the author of a great um, uh, method book called Tales um, of a Musical Journey. And well, without further ado, Irina, thank you for joining us. Um, today's topic we're gonna talk about is um, how we are dealing with these strange times you know it's it, it's been our, it seems like our, our world was just flipped upside down and there's many different ways in which people adapt to crisis like these so the first thing I'd like to 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 know from from you and from your experience is how how are you dealing with this new uh COVID-19 world hello everyone and um Thank you, Lanzo, for inviting me. I'm very humbled and honored to be here. Uh, to answer your question, I'm trying to deal as best as I can. Of course, it's a huge learning curve for me, as I'm sure for many teachers. Um, I know there are some teachers who are really pros with technology. I'm not one of them, so I was trying to learn but i always um remember that if there is a door that is shut there is always a window that can be opened and that what i think happened with most of us we found that windows through technology so our students uh, don't lose the momentum of learning and continued over these three months of isolation, of not being able to have face-to-face -face lessons. And um, of course, uh, the main obstacle uh, is, uh, I would say there are a couple obstacles, very important, is um, uh, the sound that we can hear on our end that is practically impossible to work on and not being able to physically help the student because we are so far away. And especially it's um, concerning the young students when teaching is basically hands-on experience. Uh, we cannot teach young kids with only explanations or even demonstrations. We have physically to take their hands in ours and help them. So that's definitely lost. But on the other side, um, we saw how our students practice at home, what their working place look like, what instruments they're playing on, how they sit at the piano, and because of this opportunity, we can correct a lot of things. So that's, I think, is, is a good, um, something good that came out of the situation. About the sound, I know <clears throat> a lot of teachers, <clears throat> excuse me, invested in pretty expensive uh, equipment. 
uh, and I at first I was panicking and thinking what I have to buy to to get it better but I did realize that unless the student has the same type of equipment and very strong connection nothing is gonna work so um, no matter what program you use either it's a zoom or a facetime or a facebook messenger it probably is going to be the same uh kind of perception you're going to get from from the other side but it, it is the most important that internet connection is strong and um students at least use a computer other than cell phone because cell phones don't get as much uh, quality as, as possible so those are my uh, <laughs> little struggles yeah. uh, especially now that i'm teaching college students and they're playing very advanced repertoire it, it it's i i have to guess a lot of times what what i would like to hear <laughs> instead of <laughs> well, how is it how is it for you um because i remember we were we were talking um uh later uh, last week a little bit about how what some of the good like positive things and some of the negative things and you've you've uh, talked about both um but i guess a lot of those things vary depending on the level of the students right because maybe college level students are are maybe less dependent like and and it's easier to explain things with words because they are able to understand more complex concepts uh and whereas you know younger students or very beginners have they they really require someone there like grabbing their arms their wrists and and a lot more um in-person engagement and stimulation right um and and the and, and also the, the the there's the technological side right there's a generation that is very may, maybe different from yours and mine right they were born with this they 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 already know it's almost like they're they're it's it's a chip in their brain that already knows how to use the computer how to use the phone they already know every platform they know how to how to uh work it and and if they don't they can learn maybe faster than they can learn piano <laughs> but um Absolutely. So how, how, how is that, how, how is that uh, in your experience, like dealing with younger students and then older students, since you have uh, all kinds? Uh, right now, I'm not teaching young students because my full-time job is in college right now. So right. basically, I'm on, at home teaching online my college students. I, I can tell that it would be for me personally practically impossible to teach young students. I can even imagine how teachers struggle with that. But even with college students, um, uh, there are a lot of struggles, especially some of them are in countries like Indonesia and Thailand, and uh, they don't even have internet connection. So we still manage they send me recordings and i comment on every little thing i can and send it back to them so we can exchange but i also found out there's some uh, apps and some uh, web-based programs that can help teachers such as screen flow where you can basically stop the recording write your write your comment and student sees that comment right where they made a mistake or you want to correct something uh, there is a web-based platform called musical where you can actually write to student everything and um, they can upload their recording you can upload your recording mm. so we do learn a lot of things and that's great i love learning that's what i do my whole life <laughs> right right so I guess that's one of the one of the most important things as as educators, almost in any field, right? Is uh, you're only as as good as your your learning, right? Because if you stop learning, then you have you don't have as much yeah, to to give. That's wonderful. How about you? How how are you dealing with all these? Um, so it's it's gone through different stages, you know. Um, at the beginning, and I'm sure like most people, it's like, uh, like what, what just happened? Uh, like my career is over and all this dramatic uh, <laughs> uh, thoughts come. But then um, 
and you start sort of, uh, you know, having conversations with your students, with your colleagues, see how they're dealing with it. And I, I think that's why these uh, spaces are so important. So at the beginning, I just said, okay, well, it seems like everyone is transitioning to online. Uh, people have been doing it before COVID, um, but we never really, you know, thought of it as like an, uh, an alternative, really. Maybe it's just an option for, for just certain uh, situations, but not as a new normal. And to my surprise, my students and their parents, um, although obviously they were not like super happy, but they were very positive about it. You know, they, they had a very good attitude. And they said, okay, um, what, what, what else can we do? Is either stop or this, this is our best alternative. So I, I really love the, the attitude. Um, and, you know, we, I've been learning about the platforms. I've been learning about different programs. I recently learned that, um, which, which I love, like I was thinking, how, do, how can I make this experience as close as, you know, the in-person experience? And, what I did was I downloaded the, um, um, and I'm, there's, there's many of these apps, but this one is the one that I, that I found that was free. It's the Adobe Acrobat Reader, uh, the PDF Reader. There is an option to share PDFs in real time. So I'll be sitting here at the piano with my iPad and I share um, the, the PDF version of, of, the, of the score of the music that they're playing. And I can actually make annotations. I have a little stylus pen here, which is a magnetic pen that I can write on the iPad. And I'll write things. And then on their end in the iPad, it, it shows in real time, right? So that's like just, just little things that I, that, I've, that I found very, very helpful. Uh, plus it has like different colors and different shapes and I can highlight and, you know, it has some, some advantages to just having my regular pen or pencil uh, in the in-person in Lesson. So that's that's. And I would like. Yeah. And I would like to mention that I'm so grateful to Facebook for creating so many groups to help teachers right away. They were like, uh, the day the lockdowns happened, there were tons of Facebook groups, and teachers were so generous sharing those who had knowledge, sharing their uh, tools. So that, that's amazing to have a community. Yes, yes. I think the, the, the support of the community is essential to, you know, withstand the crisis like, like, like this one. And uh, I think thanks to that, we were able to sustain our, our projects, our business, our mission as, as educators. Um, absolutely. So you, you're absolutely right. The, the support, like we're, when we come together, it's, it's, we're so much stronger. And uh, yeah, yeah we, we've realized this. Um, so um, I have somebody asking a question here. Can you share with us the names of the apps? So what are the names of the apps that you mentioned earlier? Uh, one is called ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow. And the other one is Musico. M-U-S-I-C-O. Okay. All right. Um, and in my case, I, I mentioned the Adobe uh, Acrobat PDF Reader, uh, which for me is an incredible tool because um, that's one of the, my frustrations. Like I, I want to tell them, do this here, do this here. And I can't, but now I can. And I've been doing it and, and it, it works. Um, all right. So I think we can, we can start you know, interacting with our audience here. I see there's uh, quite a bit of people. And so feel free to ask any questions or chime in with what you're, what you've been experiencing. Um, so make sure you, you use the raise hand option so we can go one at a time. Um, and while people are getting ready, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to share one of the questions that came in through our Instagram. Um, it says here, how do you deal with resistance from parents about online lessons? Do you have any advice? Um, you know, this situation is hard on everyone. And um, I would try to find out why they are resisting. Maybe mm. there is a 
circumstances that you cannot really help either financial difficulties or just uh, not being able to have good internet connection but if they just resist the idea of online lesson i think the main reason is that if we stop and don't have lessons for three four or who knows how long time the kids most likely will lose interest because they lost the momentum and it will be very hard to get them back on track and also they'll feel very discouraged because they'll forget a lot of things and even if they get back to lessons they might feel a lot of frustration and um, it will be a hard time for both teacher and student to resume the lessons after such a long break. Right. So I would definitely encourage to talk to parents very nicely, politely, find out what's happening and why they are resisting and uh, try to that my best interest, it's not like I don't want to lose my income, but I really truly care about the student. Right, right. Uh, we have uh, Inessa here wanting to ask a question. Hi, Irina. Hi, Nessa. And Hi, Nessa. Nice, nice to see, see you. you. Uh, my question is, are you planning on going back on face-to-face uh, -face, uh, in-person lessons? Because I, I was brave enough to offer it to my students and half of them are ready to do it. But I wonder what what's your thoughts on that? And I'm gonna mute myself because my grandson is in another room. <laughs> so I don't want him to uh, interrupt, but I'll be listening. Okay. Uh, again, as I'm not teaching um, school grade kids right now, only college students, I am definitely planning to go back to China at some point and resume face-to-face -face lesson. But of course, I hear from a lot of teachers and I know a lot of them already resumed face-to-face -face lessons, even though they still take some precautions like wearing masks, uh, cleaning the keys after each student, taking little breaks to um, refresh the air in the room, disinfect. But um, I... I think that's the best solution to resume as, as long as a student family and you are feeling safe to start resuming face-to-face -face lesson because um, online teaching cannot substitute face-to-face. -face. It could be a temporary solution, but not a substitution uh, of face-to-face -face lessons. But it is important that both sides feel safe and comfortable. All right. I completely agree. And I think you can you can do it in different ways. I've been thinking about all, like starting to do uh, in person again, but maybe just slowly, maybe like every other week first so that, you know, we, we are we are sort of keeping track. We already know a little bit more about what what can happen with this with this virus and and what the risks are and stuff like that. So you can, you know, gradually um, start and maybe not all the students. There are some students that, that uh, for, for example, I am prioritizing in a way, the students, for example, that have competitions coming up or a specific performance or something like that, right? So I, I, I give them uh, a little bit of that, that um, priority in person first. And then I'll be like alternating um, the, the, the weeks that I'll be teaching online. So just to give enough time and space also in, in case anything uh, happens. Absolutely, I agree with you. It has to be a uh, not very quick transition. It right, be right. A little bit over everyone. And I think the most important thing in this case, obviously, is this, the safety of our of our own health, but also to to ask the parent and the kids how comfortable they are doing. It, right. So my first approach is, okay, if I feel comfortable, obviously I will ask them, do you feel comfortable? How do you feel about doing this, right? So you, you want to help, you, you want to make them be part of this decision as well, not just because it's, it's, a, it's, it's a delicate subject. So you can't be just like making the decision for them. That's, 
that can be uh, Absolutely. it's a big responsibility and even when you start face to face lesson uh, this situation is so unknown for all of us you don't know how kids what they think about it and uh, they might be scared of you touching them because they all hear about this uh, virus so i would definitely before uh, we start lessons talk to child about how they feel and if they don't mind i would clean my hands with sanitizer every right. time i want to touch them so they they feel uh, comfortable right well actually that's a that's a really good point Irina. you make a, a, a really important point like once you do decide to resume you still have to to make sure you take ex almost extreme precautions right like make sure that everything is disinfected make sure you wear the mask make sure they wear the mask make sure it's, it's not like the entire family in 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 your studio or in your living room wherever it is that you teach uh maybe just like one person at a time uh disinfect you know all the the precautions maybe take temperature if you can if you have access to uh one of those really cool like uh, uh measurement like uh temperature guns <laughs> that, that people have um uh and just ask them to to um to be honest with you if they're not feeling well if they're not um <laughs> you know because and and you have to be if if you have to be honest with them too you can say like hey i'm not feeling very well today uh so just just to keep everyone uh you know safe but i think with this situation we also learned that there are possibilities uh not to miss lessons if for example uh we go on vacation or just out of town but our students need lessons we can jump right in on internet and make up a lesson or give extra lesson so that's another thing i've personally never thought about but now i think that's a great opportunity Instead that's right of, yeah we can get closer to our students we can you know keep a keep a closer eye on them and they they will have access more access to us as well yes yes definitely yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Are you planning on starting your face-to-face um, -face lessons or not yet? I am probably uh, this week or next week. Next week. I, I uh, got this. Um, I don't know how... Oh, uh, fancy. <laughs> at least they can see, you know, my mouse and stuff. But... Uh, the, the thing is that you cannot touch their hands or you cannot touch their arms. This will be difficult. How do you do that? Yeah, right? Yeah, it's got to be a slow, slow transition, like Irina said. All right, let's see. I think we are about time now. Um, if, if any of you have any more questions, um, so feel free to submit them. We'll, we'll try to get uh, to them uh, perhaps next time. And um, well, for now, I'd like to thank everybody who joined us. I'd like to thank um, Irina for your input, uh, your thank expertise. You. This is so, so helpful and so inspiring for, for all of us uh, and for our students as well. This is gonna, this, the impact of, of this information can actually go uh, very far. And um, well, this is the very first episode of our pedagogy talks. Every week we're gonna have a different topic. We'll be having different discussions. And so I want to invite you to, you know, stay, stay um, tuned with us next week, next Monday, same time. It's 10 a.m. Eastern time, uh, 1 p.m. Um, sorry, 10 a.m. Pacific time and 1 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, for those of you that are in Costa Rica, following us it would be 11 a.m there um and well if you if you find these talks useful if you find them inspiring please keep joining us and eventually hopefully uh, you will you will be considering signing up for the workshop during the costa rica piano festival that we'll be having online where irina is going to talk about all sorts of um educational topics in depth that you can start applying right away with your students. So thank you everyone for joining us and we will see you next week.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Irina. Take care. Thank you a lot. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.